Like that's if I don't understand the concept of purpose and the value of me giving as a giver, right. as a receiver, if I don't understand that concept, then how will I ever be able to identify obstacles and opportunities and problems in my respective field and then present solutions? Because I'll only be thinking about my fulfillment and my identity. Therefore, I'll create a product that nobody needs. Right. It only meets my needs. Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to In My Bag with Backpack Jeff, where we connect with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And y'all, today I got a very special guest here with me, the founder and CEO of Engage365. He also have a movement that um, I've been tracking for a long time, and I can't wait to find out about it, called B. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Green. How you doing, brother? I'm doing really well, man. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming on uh, to the podcast um, and talking to us. Um, man, I want to dive right into it, man. Yeah. Um, because I I've been following you, and you were recommended to me um, by KC, uh, KC Whitaker and, uh, and and that, um, that uh, relationship. Um, and when I met them, they were like, yo, you got to meet this dude. You got to follow this dude because I'm interested in being a motivational speaker. Mm. He's a speaker. He goes out to these different uh, programs, schools, and organizations. Tell us who Jerry Green is, man. I think, you know, when I break down being and, and identity, mm -hmm. identity is broken down into your spirit, your soul, and your body. Okay. Uh, so on the base, base level of body, you know, I am a father, a husband, you know, a community activist, uh, a citizen, you know, I'm those things. But who I really am as far as spirit, you know, I'm really a transformed, regenerated, you know, uh, uh, spiritual being, and the way I express that is through my soul, the way that I, the way that I think, the way that I create, the way that I love. Um, so, who I really am, I'm just really a lover and a reconciler, and I'm always trying to love people into reconciling with themselves, right? Reconciling with God, reconciling with the world. You know what I'm saying? So, just reconciling. That's who I am. Then how I do that is through you know all the business and writing and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, and we're going to dive deep into that. So I want to talk a little bit about you said you kind of transformed into you know the things that you do now. Walk us back to walk us uh, start us from when you first started. Man, have you always been like this, or was there some shift that happened in your life that you said, okay, Jared, you got to make some changes. You got to make them right now. Uniquely. I've always been this way for two main reasons. Number one, uh, my father. So it always comes back to a word. Who spoke life into you? Who spoke right. light into you? And so from the time I was a child, being able to, and, and being blessed and privileged to, I shouldn't even have to say this, but being blessed and privileged to have a father. Yes. I should have, everybody should be able to say that, but unfortunately, you know, circumstances change. But I, I grew up under the household, uh, under the roof of my father and mother. They're still together to this day. And I was empowered to prosper with a blessing. Hey, you can speak, you can teach, you can lead. So I I was really operating in this gift and as a young kid. Wow. Um, I remember when I was in high school, I was speaking at other high schools. So a high schooler speaking to high schoolers. <laughs> when I went to UVA, I was speaking at high school high schools and then doing different college retreats and stuff like that. Um, and then when I got to the NFL, doing doing the same thing. So I've I've always been operating in the same wavelength. Now, I will say two things that that changed uh, my trajectory. Number one was okay. You know that you have a gift of speaking. You know that you have a gift of connecting and empowering with pe uh, people. But how will you express that? And that's where the life journey of like, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I be a um, you know, a nonprofit founder? Should I be a pastor? Should I be a community? You know, I went through all those different phases because you're right. trying to find, sometimes people try to find themselves. I wasn't trying to find myself. I was trying to find the medium for me to express who I am the best way. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. So I, I think it always, it always was there. And I think for everybody, it's always there. It's just who unlocked it? So my father unlocked it. And then where are you expressing the thing you know mm -hmm. and i think that was important for me that's amazing man your dad saw your gift early yeah and then yeah. He, he he pushed you in that direction yeah Did, was there any pushback initially from you no um so you got to go way back right when i was three and four years old uh, growing up in in dc 
um, in an affluent household, my father, you know, being Daryl Green during the Redskin era, right? During right. The, the, the Super Bowls and all that stuff. So because of that, we always found ourselves entertaining guests um, at galas, um, at right. different, you know, ceremonies. So I would have to regularly suit up, you know, and, and wear nice clothes and mm -hmm. go out. So my dad would always say, these people are going to come to you and ask you questions, talk to you, you know, yeah. uh, uh, shoot like some short short uh what do you call that um, uh, uh small talk right and so you have to be prepared so at four years old he was coaching me up like okay you know we're going to the white house the president's probably gonna ask you a question you know like literally every wow. level I was, I was in the white house i was at the black caucus i was at uh the redskins alumni dinners so all of that stuff um even even when i when my dad went to the hall of fame i was um in a room with all of the hall of famers and i was one of only two out, uh, two non Hall of Famers in the room, which the other one was Art Monk's son. So in that room, how are you going to conduct yourself when Jim Brown comes up to say hello, when Michael Irvin comes up to say hello, right? When, when John Madden comes, so I had to always speak, and that's why I, I my my um, Instagram is Jerry Green speaks because I've been speaking since my dad told me <laughs> you got to speak. You know, you got to yeah. Ever since you could speak, man, it seems like you've just been speaking at, at a high level. So let me ask you this: You talked about you were in high school and speaking to high school students. What does a high schooler say to other high school students? You know, my greatest uh, lesson and my greatest word for any place that I go is my story. Okay. And I think there's so much power in our story and people want to hear a story. I mean, if you think about the last 24 hours of your life, you probably listened to at least 20 stories. Absolutely. You, you, didn't, you might not recognize it, but the commercial said, I was once this and then I used this product, now I this. You watch, you know, this rapper rap this song about a story. You, you, you have a neighbor and they say, hey, what's up? Yeah, yesterday we, and they told a story. So stories right. are the, the, in my opinion, they're the most sacred means of communication between uh, people. And so I just told my story, you know, and I, I tell my story in different ways, um, same story, different ways, in different parts of my story that made sense for whoever the audience was. That, that makes sense, man. This That's the reason why I wanted you on the podcast, because yeah. I was interested in your story. I was interested in, you know, in, in who you are. So you, you, you started speaking. You, uh, you you went to UVA. What did you what did you get your degree in, in uh, UVA? My degree was in football, man. It, I mean, was, I, 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 I went to play, play football. Yeah. Um, to this day, if it wasn't for sports, I wouldn't have went to college because I had so many ideas and so many dreams. I wanted to build business. But my mom wanted me to go to college, and football was something that I was playing and had hopes to get to the NFL to fund what I wanted to do. I didn't go to the NFL to be an NFL player. I was like, man, if I can get a bag, then I can do these other things. Right. So, so um, all that being said, I went to UVA. I got an anthropology and sociology degree. Okay. Um, I, in hindsight, I'm grateful that I did because I learned how people interact with one another, right. um, and I learned the the, the human mind and. And stuff like that. So I think it's a great thing, but that wasn't what I was. What I, you know, I, I was not a studious. I love to study what I love to study. <laughs> you know, what? I, I will say the same thing. I, I wasn't always a reader growing up, but when I graduated from uh, from uh, Waynesburg University and I finished my bachelor's degree, then I became a reader because now yeah. I can read the things that I'm interested in reading. I have a nice little library over there. I'm yeah. like. Now I'm fo it, it doesn't take me anything to want to read something because right. you know it's it's what I want to do it's what I want to read so I definitely understand you on that man so you said you said you played college sports what was what was college sports like for you what did what are some of the takeaways or the lessons that you learned from playing sports in college college sports was the most rewarding and most challenging thing that I've that I've uh, witnessed in my life before getting married and having children and all these things. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because I lived in the tension between my father is greater than any coach or any teammate I will ever have. So I, I have to live with that reality. Right. So it's hard for me to, and, and this isn't just my mindset, they know that too. Right. So it's hard for me to find commonality with these people because my coach in the back of his head is thinking, man, this dude's dad is a legend, maybe even my hero. You know. Right. And then my teammates are saying, who is he? Is he his dad? Does he think he's all that because his dad? Is he as fast as his dad? Is he this and that? So I lived with that. That's the fr the first layer. Mm -hmm. The second layer is college sports are tough, and you got to make your way. You know, you got to earn your stripes. And so I went through the difficulty of being a freshman and redshirting, and then you know trying to get on the field, and and then I went through. So that's those two layers. 
the third layer being undersized you know I got to college at 168 pounds you know wow. so I was a small guy I was super fast but that's all I had to me so then the insecurities of am I big enough they're telling me I gotta weigh more they're telling me I gotta eat more that you know so I'm, I'm living to that and then the fourth layer is I'm a college student so I got classes I got tests I got quizzes and so, yeah. so there's so many layers that you're going through psychologically that, uh, that that are up against you so for me it was challenging now the rewarding part was I overcame like mm -hmm. I started in games I made major plays in games I excel, uh, excelled and, and ascended to the next level so it was extremely rewarding but challenging and I lived with that tension every single day from 5 in the morning to 10 at night or whatever and so the the do you felt like your lifestyle in college has now groomed you to to have the lifestyle that you have now? And, and when I say that, I'm saying that, like, you know, in college playing football, you got during spring ball, you got those early morning workouts yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. You got late night meetings. So, yeah. you know, you're up at five in the morning and you don't go to bed until sometimes 10 or 11 o'clock at yeah. night. And it's football, school, you know, all of the other stuff that you're dealing with, yeah. relationships, friendships and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? Do you think that that life, that being in that type of environment in college has kind of groomed you to handle what you're doing now? Because we're going to talk about the group me that you have right now. You're up every day faithful and posting that at 6, at 6 a.m. Yeah. Your post is coming yeah. in at 6 a.m. Yeah. on the dot. How, how do you think that those two, um, those two uh, relate? I think <clears throat> I've been chasing that, 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 that lifestyle. And it's not college football or anything. It's the lifestyle of discipline. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped playing ball, I remember when I retired. I retired early, my third year in the league. Um, because I knew that if I kept playing, I was going to be suppressing what I, my ultimate calling was. So wow. from that time, 2014, um, I well, first of all, let me acknowledge the reality. For four years... Uh, 15, 16, 17, let's say three and a half years, I just let myself go. Like, man, I've been running all the time, working out all the time, eating on these regimens. Like, I just want to just be free. Yeah. So then I lost it, and then you go three and a half years of just, you know, being a slob. You know, just like, <laughs> man, I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat because I never was allowed to eat. Right. I want to not work out. You know, I want to do whatever. So then came a point, I remember I was... Um, I was at a gym. I had just joined a new gym only because of a friend. He was like, yo, you got to join this gym out in Tyson's Corner. So I was like, all right, I'm going to join this gym. And I got out there and I wasn't able to, you know, do all the things that I wanted to do as far as running the treadmill at the speeds that I wanted to run and at the incline and at the, for the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man, I think I lost a little something. So then that drove me back. Like, okay, I'm about to get it in. Yeah. And so from 2018 to today, I've been laser focused. Like, man, I got to get it back. So I'll say... I was disciplined in that era, but I got off of it, became mm -hmm. undisciplined, and now I'm chasing after the discipline of my youth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let, let me ask you this then, because I, I think I've been dealing with this over the past couple of months. I'm finding myself really, really tired throughout the day, mm. all right? And I'm thinking it's because I stopped working out. Mm. Do you like? Do, do you think, because like when I, when I work out, like the adrenaline is pumping and stuff like yeah. that, you know what I mean? Um, my, my blood is flowing and you know I'm, I'm starting my day the way that I want to start my day I love them early morning workouts but lately uh, th things have been just very hectic and, and super busy and so I, I said to wow. myself starting today is May 1st right yeah starting today I'm back at it so right after this I'm going to go hit the gym and nice. then I'm going to I'm going to a pop-up shop but I was like I got to get back into this uh, idea of working out and getting the blood flowing and just kind of getting you know um, my, my regimen back man so I love this conversation I love everything you were saying because I believe that it's important to know your body so think about what I said earlier about about who we are right, right. the spirit the soul the body many of us are good at recognizing and, and, and embracing one of the three right so it's probably like oh man my soul is solid that's my mind my emotions my thoughts mm -hmm. like like that's where I'm at so I'm solid here but their spiritual life is dead, you know, or their body is, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's rare to have all three. Like spiritually, I'm solid. Soul is right. And then my body is good. When you find that alignment, that's when you get the flow. 
and, and that deep flow, that work, uh, that deep work, that's when you hit like most people that peak in, in, in creativity and in you know, entrepreneurship or in parenting or whatever, they're in that flow, right? right? The journey is finding out what your flow is and not taking other people's flow. Yeah. So I like <laughs> that you just identified this is what I need, right? Right. For me, um, two things that I do that are very important. I don't work longer than two hours at a time because if I do, my brain and my body just become real tired. It's almost like if you're in your car and you're just maxing out at a hundred miles an hour the whole ride. Like you can't, you, nah, don't do that. Like you, you hit it, punch it when you're 95 going straight and then, okay, let me slow down. I got to take an exit. I got to, got to turn. I got to yeah, stop. Good. So for me, I'm like, all right, two hours, let's lock in, let's get it. And then, and then after that, I take an hour off. And so then I'm like, all right, during this hour, I'm going to be productive. I might meditate. I might drink uh, water. I might, you know, go for a walk. Um, I might do anything or I might connect with a person. Um, and so that, so it might be that you, That's but we're all discovering what is it that get restores our energy. Yeah. Oh, yo, I, I like that. And you know, you know what? I, I just said that um, to my girl the other day. I was like, sometimes I don't need a nap. Sometimes I just need to rest. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's and when I was and and when I was in my in the office before the whole pandemic and stuff like that started, like during lunch I would go out and I would take I would w do a walk and read I would call yeah, it yeah. walk and read so I would take an hour Very I would good. take thirty minutes walk around and just read walk around the building and I would just read Very and good. I would come back in and now I'm recharged again so that's a good I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna start putting that into practice I like yeah. that idea man and 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 it's all about creating your flow and loving your flow right right so like for me. My flow is I take a twenty minute nap. That's just one of my things. Now it's funny. I do I do this and I don't I don't do this all the time because I don't I'm not a lover of coffee, but I'll drink coffee and then take a twenty minute nap. Right. And they say that it takes twenty minutes for the coffee to, to kick in. So uh -huh. so then when I wake up I'm like, yeah, I'm like, whoa, let's go. Now yeah. I, I also am big on not depending on a substance. So right. I'm not gonna do that every day. Of but course. if I have a work day like like um, last last when this past Wednesday I had an assessment um, where I was working with a client. We're assessing potential uh, executives, so it's a long day. I mean, from morning to night, assessing resumes and these clients, and and so with a long day like that, I had to say, okay, let's break. We got some food, light food. I'm not gonna eat heavy during the day. A lot of people eating burgers and big, you know, chicken and all that stuff during the middle of the day. There's no way you're gonna make it. Um, so I'm gonna eat a light meal, maybe a salad, something like that. Then I'm going to um, go get some coffee, hit it, take a little nap in the car, boom, come back out, refresh. Um, so you just, you got to learn your, your, your thing. Now, I also sandwich my day with things that inspire me. Okay. So it helps me to wake up early in the morning when I have something to wake up to. So I'll switch my workouts out, right? Like, like this morning, it's like, okay, we're doing some boxing today. Uh -huh. So... I'm excited. I'm like, oh man, we doing six rounds this uh, tomorrow morning. Right. So I go to bed like, man, I'm gonna knock that back, you know. Yeah. And then I wake up, I feel good. Then in the evening, I go, okay, I know that I'm gonna, you know, um, spend time with this individual, or my wife and I we're gonna have some quality time. We're gonna we're gonna finally read that one book together, whatever. Right. So I'm sandwiching, and I feel like in the middle of the day, I'm tricking myself to believe like, if you do this then you'll get to hang out with your wife. Well, I'm going to hang out with her regardless. regardless. Right. But my mind is thinking, okay, I'm going to crush this because it's 4 o'clock and we're going to hang out at 6. It's goal-oriented. I, mean, I, I think we're goal-oriented goal goal people, so yeah. we feel much better after we've accomplished something, even the most smallest of goals. That's why in the win journals right here, I take an opportunity now to literally write down my wins every week, even yeah. the small wins. Like, today will be a win for me. I got to shoot this podcast with you. For sure. Today will be a win for me. Um, I'm starting back in the gym. You know what I mean? I, I supported my girlfriend at the vendor pop-up shop that she has. All of those little wins that I have, I make sure yeah. that I take time and write those down. It's interesting that you said um, something about, like, the like your morning. Uh, your morning. Do you have a morning routine? And the reason why I'm asking is because... Um, I, I realized just the other day I said to myself I'm waking up too fast mm. like as soon as I get up my feet hit the ground 100 miles right uh. and, I, and, I, and so I, I'm asking myself I'm like I think I'm waking up too fast and I think I need to center myself Yeah. do you have a morning routine? Uh, I do have a morning routine 
Um, and my morning routine, this this goes directly, um, this, this aligns directly with the last statement that I said about knowing yourself, knowing your body um, and, your, and your soul. So my morning routine functions according to my personality. Okay. I used to adopt Eric Thomas's morning routine or Tony Robbins' morning routine. You know, all these prof professional, uh, successful people because I was like, if I do what they do, then I'll get the results that they will. But I found out I don't have their mind or their body, so I can't. So that doesn't make sense, wow. right? So I wake up at 5 a.m., okay? I Now, the reason why I wake up at 5 is because I have children. So I've got to wake up a, a long time before they wake up because if, if I don't, then I'll never get that me time, right? right? So I wake up at 5 a.m. There's three things that I do as soon as I wake up. Okay. There's wake and I, I say it like this: wake up, fill up, pray up. Okay. So I wake up, and what I mean by wake up, I mean actually get up, get out of your bed. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get out of your bed, you're just sitting up there. You're gonna fall back asleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one. Wake up. Now fill up. I, I keep an empty water jug on my kitchen table because that makes me have a task. I've got to get up to go fill the water bottle up. I don't have the water just waiting for me. Wow. Because I fill it up saying, okay, yep, let me grab that. All right, now I'm filling it up. And that's my brain is rewarding itself. I just completed something. I filled that whole thing up. Oh, and it's refreshing. Right. Now I start drinking. Then from there, I pray up. So a lot of people, you know, that oh, you got to have a prayer closet or you got to get on your knee. I don't do that because that doesn't work with my personality. I walk and pray. So I do a prayer walk. So I, I'll either go outside or I'll, you know, kind of walk throughout my house. And so I'm, I'm elevating mentally physical physically spiritually now i do all of that in 30 minutes mm -hmm. after that 30 minutes is up waking up filling up pray up i go and, and work out i work out before i write before i create before i read before i meditate because i'm still not up like i'm, right. I'm, I'm kind of like comatose you know yeah. <laughs> and then and then once i work out i work out for 45 minutes soon as i'm finished working out before i even shower I get into my mode, like I, I start writing, I start creating, I start setting the things for my days, my goals, my three tasks that I got to complete. So from that point, it's now, uh, what, uh, 6.15 maybe? Yeah, sure. And, and now at 6.15, I'm saying, I've already woke up, I've already had my good meditation, or I had, um, um, actually, let me, let me rephrase that, I've already had my good prayer time, I've already had a good workout in. Um, now I'm about to read this book, get a little motivational inspiration from some other writer, and then I'm going to get into my creative bag. Now, I meditate after that, because if you meditate before that, guided meditation, just, just quieting your, your, your spirit and just being calm, um, if, if I do that before that, I'm going to fall asleep. Right. So now I'm meditating at a, at a heart you know, BPM of, let's just say, like 90-something or 80-something. So I'm up. Like, right. I, I got adrenaline pumping because I just worked out. But I'm also still stilling my, you know, being still. Mm -hmm. So look at how my, per but that's my personality. Right. My personality is I'm hype. Okay, now I'm chill. Okay, now I'm this. Now I'm that. And that's the way I want my morning to be. Yeah. So so I own my morning. My my morning doesn't own me. A lot of people attack their morning ritual, their morning uh, uh, practice, as a chore or a responsibility. Right. And my morning is in control. Like, I got to do this because morning said I got to do this. Right. For me, I'm like, no, morning, you submit to me. My personality, this is my life. So so before this sun goes up, it's going to have to deal with the way that I'm wired. You know? Absolutely, man. And that's and that's finding out who you are. Created, you, you've created what works best for you. And I, yeah. I definitely, I, I implore everyone to explore what works best for them, what morning routine works best for them. And I... I definitely understand what you're saying, wanting to get up before the kids because you need that morning time. When I was going back to finish my master's degree, I, I had to wake up at 3.45 because I was like, this is the only way that I'm going to get the amount of studying in yeah. and schoolwork done that I need to get done in order to, because when she comes home now, I got to help her with her schoolwork, yeah. you know what I mean, stuff like that. So by the time she gets home, I need all of my stuff to already be done. I need all of my me time, all of my studying, all of my focus, and everything that I need to prep for work that day to have already been done and then work. So Absolutely. I definitely understand that. 
Um, so now let's let's get a little bit more into uh, this Engage 365. Okay. Talk to us a little bit about what this movement is. Engage 365 is um, uh, four and a half years old right now, and it started off in in the wildest way. My dad was contracted um, or working through contract negotiations with Wamada, the Metro, DC Metro. Um, I my dad calls me says, Hey, Jared. Because at the time, I was working with the George Mason Athletic Program, and I was creating modules and frameworks for people to discover their purpose, to operate um, in their most optimal talent um, and aptitude so that they could perform on the basketball court or on the track, if it, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and so I was creating that and doing that. I've always had a desire to help people with frameworks. I'm a visual creative, um, but also a teacher. So he calls me and says, hey, they want me to work with WMATA because there's some issues, um, you know, whatever was going on with WMATA at the time. There's always something going on with the Metro. <laughs> uh, but, but he was like, hey, they want me to like coach and motivate and all that, but this is right up your alley. So he said, you come to the meeting with me. So I pull up, we go to the, um, to the Metro right up there by um, uh, whatever it's called now, Capital One Center, Verizon Center, whatever, yeah. whatever it's called yeah. now. Um, and so I show up. And my dad is like, hey, present, like show them exactly what you do and let's work together as a team, father, son, and we can help a lot of these employees. There are hundreds, maybe even a thousand people working at the Metro. Right. And so we presented this whole thing of how we can help them go from good to great, how we can work with diversity, equity, and inclusion, how we can build um, unity uh, among the different departments. It was so awesome. And they, I'm grateful that they allowed me an hour to present to the CEO, COO, CFO. I mean, this is the big dogs right. um, for the Metro. They run the city. And um, they, they, they did not accept our proposal, number one. Number two, they launched a program that was very similar to what we were talking about, <laughs> and they never called us. So I have, some, I have some issues with the Metro. But here's the silver lining. That night, my church was doing, a, uh, doing an event at a Chick-fil-A, Spirit Night, they call it, where they raise money for children. Sure. I pulled up to Spirit Night because I told somebody, I was like, yo, I'm going to come through, I'm going to slide through, buy yeah. some food, donate to the kids. So I get there, but I still have my folder and all my stuff from the proposal. Well, I got there early before Spirit Night started. So I was like, man, let me just open up this proposal. They didn't like it. Let me just go back through my notes. The owner of the Chick-fil-A walks up to me and goes, man, what is all that? That looks crazy. Like, like you know, Chick-fil-A owners, they're always right. nice. They walk uh, yeah. up to you like, hey, what's up? So um, I said, yeah, I'm doing this thing for, um, you know, staff engagement and whatever. I didn't have an LLC. I was just an individual going to do a one-off. Um, he goes, man, can you pilot that here? I go, man, right here at this chick <laughs> He's like, yeah. Boom, we piloted that. Once again, I did not have a business. And we started working together, collaborating and helping his new hires, helping his current employees, helping uh, those who are already in some sort of uh, uh, supervisor roles grow into leadership. Right. The store, the retention s skyrocketed. The the um, the sales skyrocketed. I think up to eighteen percent increase in revenue that year. Wow. And so he calls me back like, "Yo, let's let's keep on working. Let's keep on building." <laughs> well, then two, three other Chick Fil A's called. So now now all the Chick Fil A's in Fairfax are working with me. You know, not if, if not all. You know, four of the five or six. Right. Um, so then I go and get an LLC. Like once they asked me to, you know, work with them, I'm like, all right, I gotta start a business. Yeah. This was just a good idea. Now it's becoming a business. Right. And I think that's the beauty of business. Like when it's organic, when it's just a good idea, and then it turns into something, it's beautiful. You don't have to work for it. So, so then now I'm working with four different Chick Fil A's and George Mason. Then it becomes Dovell Technology. Then it becomes Link Services. Then it becomes Fairway Mortgage. Then it becomes you know other Chick-fil-A's and, and next thing you know I have 40 clients now not all at the same time I probably at the, I think the most clients I've ever had at the same time was I think 24 which is a lot mm -hmm. so now I have a full-on company all these frameworks I got about 200 frameworks for leadership development um, employee engagement purpose mindset culture building all these all these frameworks and I'm doing it at, at the individual small business level now fast forward to today we got an app, we've got, you know, um, content writers, we've got conferences, we've got coaching strategies, now we coach. Um, so it's just 
exploded, and I, I still think we're not even close to where like mm -hmm. where we're gonna go. But but Engage three sixty five is employee engagement every day. That's all it is. So you know, man, yo, I I love that man, and and here here's why. Um, well, obviously because of, because of what it is as a whole, but a couple of reasons that I love it, man, is because in 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 this area in, in the DMV area, man, it's it's been really difficult for me to find men like you, and I want to mm. specifically say men. Mm. And the reason being is because I've I've found quite a few women who you know um, are doing things, but you know it's it's women empowering women, and I and I love that. Yeah. And I'm like, where are the men that are empowering men? Where yeah. where are the men that are supporting men? Like when I when I look at what the entrepreneurs are doing in Atlanta, um, and they're all over social media and stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, where where is that and who is doing that here, you know what I mean, to create an atmosphere where entrepreneurs get together and they support the heck out of each other. You know what I mean? And they just come I mean they, they come together, they're playing chess last night. I just saw on the story they had game night and stuff like that, you know, at people's houses and they you know they come together, they they pick each other's brains, you know, they talk about different businesses and strategies and you know they help each other to succeed because it doesn't feel like a competition. It feels like I'm supporting my friend and what it is that they're yeah. doing. So I I'm, I'm I'm happy like I'm, I'm, I'm in a space where I'm like, yo, I'm glad to know you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, to, and to hear more about your story today um, and get to know you more. Um, but specifically, man, I'm like, I, I, this, this is a man in, in this area who is doing something in the realm of uh, entrepreneurship, in the realm of coaching, in the realm of just growing, you know, who you are. And I appreciate that. And I, I think the unfortunate reality of where we live everything is so expensive you always go back to the money right mm -hmm. follow the money trail and because everything's so expensive very few people want to give opportunity because like man i gotta protect mine right i gotta pay my mortgage i gotta pay my rent i gotta pay my car and so what it looks like here is everyone's holding on for dear life for survival mm -hmm. whereas there's other spaces where you got a little bit more wiggle room um our our um, wealth gap is extremely like it's it's very wide yeah. right and then and then at the same time we don't have a lot of homegrown people here um, whereas a lot of people in the south like man I've been here for all these right. years like I'm gonna create a path for another person here it's like man I moved here from Alabama I moved here from like three of my closest buddies they're all from other uh, states right you know and, and so so when you're from another place, you're still trying to get your bearings. It's, I think the DMV is very, very um, complex. Also, I believe that our art scene has always historically been, you know, stronger, okay. right? Go, go. Um, a lot of the art, um, literal art that we do in the city, mm -hmm. um, the music scene. So that's, that's catapulted, but the business scene really isn't strong. Mainly because I believe, and this this could be wrong. I, this is just as a child growing up here, and and, and then now a man. Um, government runs everything out here. Mm -hmm. You know, probably right. probably seventy five percent of your friends have government jobs, right. and then if they don't have government jobs, they have school educational jobs. So if it's not government or education, what is it? Right. And, and here's what I think the biggest challenge is in the DMV. Have you found the problem? that the government or businesses or private sector or uh, schools um, or small businesses have. Because, uh, see, when you live in Atlanta, when you live in Houston, I love those cities, um, or Nashville, when you live in those areas, you can create business and create customers. Right. right? Like, like, yo, I got a new clothing line, and now people are running to my clothing line because it's dope. And that's what is typical in that community. Don't clothing line. So right. I'm, I add me to the list, right? Out here, it's like, hey, we're not crazy on clothing out here. Like, we buy clothing from the top retailers. Right. You know, it's just, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, right. Or, or we're not crazy on um, whatever whatever the thing. But we, what we need, because of the wealth gap and because we're all trying to get money, we need solutions to our modern and daily problems. Do you have that? No, I don't have that, but buy my T-shirt. I don't want that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and so it's, it's funny. Even with coaching. That's good. I was like, 
man, I love coaching, but people don't want coaching. Like, like there are a few people, if, if, for those who have like a, a coaching practice, you don't have a crazy amount of clients, not because you're not talented, but out here, people want coaching associated to their business and their performance. Right. Not life coaching, give me executive coaching. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 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 so that being said, I, with my business, I said, I could be a life coach and get a few clients and, and make my way, or I could become a corporate coach that's uh, employee engagement specific because you're having a problem with retention. <laughs> You're, 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 you're losing 60% of your employees a year because of the millennials that you're hiring and all this stuff. And then you have people burning out because they live the hustle and bustle of the DMV. And so there's a problem right there. I can fix that. I can coach to that. I, I'm not ever going to coach you individually. I don't have nothing to do with that. Right. But I can coach your business. And that's how I found my niche. Yo, that's <laughs> so good. That, Oh man, you just you hit the nail right on the head, man. Oh my goodness, like when when I think about it, I'm like, yo, that that is literally it. You 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 found the solution that in in, in the area, uh, you you found a solution um, in this area that this area needs. You know what I mean? Exactly. As, a, as opposed to saying, oh, I'm gonna be the one unicorn out here and everybody's gonna buy my clothing line. Yeah, because. No, it's, it's, it's not that. Find the problem yes. and then solve the problem. A lot of people do it backwards. They, they they get the product and then try to find someone to sell the product to. They're selling a solution when there's no problem. Exactly. And, and, and for me, I think there's a major difference. Our culture and our generation has mixed up these two words and this is so bad. <laughs> we, we, we call ourselves entrepreneurs. We're not entrepreneurs. We're creatives. Now, mm. now a creative just creates things. Design. Um, technology, shirts, clothing, like different, different cool things. That's great. Be a creative. An entrepreneur finds gaps and fills those gaps, not for themselves. They fix problems for other people. Like that, to me, in the history of black culture, in the history of, of American culture, people find solutions to problems. And those are the entrepreneurs. Like, like think about Amazon. Amazon's like, people want to read their books. But they they don't want to go to the library. They don't you know. So we're going to create an opportunity for them to buy books online. Right. Okay. That was a problem, and they solved it. Then fast forward. Now people want to buy something, but you know, Target clothes or whatever. So now we're going to be able to get them something uh, same day or or overnight or whatever. They're all Jeff Bezos is doing is solving problems that we all have. Literally. You know what I'm saying like that. You you can't. I don't know of a lot of entrepreneurs that operate in the creative space without a problem. Like like most of them are like, here's a problem in the market, here's a problem in this this arena, here's a solution. We for some reason we've mixed the two up. So we're like, let me create solutions, but there's no problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Hey yo, that's so good. And when, when you think about it too, what are what are these um when, when you I'm thinking when you were talking about like buying stuff. Um, and I'm shopping, and now what you see a lot when you shop, you see Afterpay, yeah. you see Kalar K Kalarna, something like that. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of so like instead of you know you want to buy this expensive thing instead of just paying it all right out. Now you have the opportunity to you know for interest free payments of yeah. this 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 and this. Someone found that niche, you know. Yeah, someone found that problem and and they solved it. And that man. <laughs> I mean, and literally, you know, I, I like to do this exercise um, okay. with, with some of the guys I mentor. I w we, we walk outside and I tell them, pick five things that you see, just anything, right? Right. So I see a light, I see cameras, I see a couch, I see carpet, I see all these things. Now, for each of those five things, I can tell you, I can tell you at least three things that need to be sold for those things. The light needs a stand, mm -hmm. right? Um, the stand needs cords. The, the carpet needs cleaning. Um, the carpet needs vacuuming. Mm -hmm. uh, the couch needs cleaning. The couch needs maintenance. The couch need, needs, need, like, I can show you all of these different areas and you just choose one and you can start a business with one of them. Like, literally, you can say, okay, I see the camera right there. All right, I'm going to start a business where um, I create lens cleaners, uh, a lens cleaner for those who, who are using camera. Right. I, like, literally, I'm just making it up right now. Yeah, no, literally, you can see anything and be like, Oh, I can fix that. Oh, they got water bottles. All right, I'm going to create um, the thing that keeps the water bottle cold. Water bottle cold. Right. You know? 
Yeah, that, yo, that that's absolutely man. Find find the problem first, and then find a solution. Don't come up yeah. with a solution and then try to find the problem. And you know why we do that? Tell us because why. we have a generation of uh, of self. Uh, um, what do you call that? Where where when you're full of yourself, um, uh, narcissistic uh -huh. people. So you really think because. When you were a child, your parents said you're good at everything. Yeah. And when you went to school, you know, they, like, so your whole life, you've heard you're the best. So now you're like, take my product because I've always. Because I'm, because I'm the best. Because, right. Because and you've always me. wanted me. I've always been good. Right. Right. So so now, how dare the market not take my product? Like, like I've never not made it. I've never not got a trophy. You know, I've never not made right. it. And, and whatever, like, whatever I wanted to do, I did it. And business don't work like that. Business does not work like that. Oh my goodness, man. yo, that's that's so, that's so good when you think about that, man. I thought about like the participation trophies and stuff like that. And you know what I said when I was coaching? I was coaching a sixth grade basketball team, right? And the one thing I said these kids need was humility. Yeah, there 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 is a lack of humility when uh, when, when we think about these kids, man. I, I had one kid; he's a super talented kid. Like I mean, extremely gifted basketball wise, right? But we're up 20 points, and he has 25 already. And his dad is yelling at me like, yo, why isn't my son in the game? Why isn't my son? He coming up to me, talking to me after the game. Like, why isn't my son in the game? I'm like, yo, chill out. Relax. Yeah. Your son's got 25. We're up 20. Right. He's and my six, best player in sixth he? grade. Sixth grade. He's sixth grader. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, so now they've created this, they've created this attitude within him where he lacks humility for other people. These other kids who don't get to play all the time. Dude, when, when it's a closed game, you never come out. Yeah. You never come out. But you're going to complain about the one time yeah. when we're up 20 and you got 25 and you, no, it, do, it doesn't work like that. And so then what happens is, um, now, so his, his dad and parents and stuff like that are extremely animated and stuff like that. And so when, when I wanted um, something for him, I was like, listen, man, what I need you to do is I need you to be bigger than this situation and bigger than who you are because yeah. it's not just about you. It's about this team. And his parents are like, just because the other, t the other kids aren't good, why does my son have to sit? A lot of times we mistake identity and purpose to be the same thing right right so identity is who you are purpose is what you're supposed to do to serve humanity right to serve the world I use the example of the couch that I'm sitting on right now the the couch its identity is that it is a couch mm -hmm. it's this color it's this texture it's this material it's this large right so that's its identity right its purpose is to be sat on by who the couch no by me right so other its existence is only to support another person to sit down. Right. We mix up identity and purpose to think the purpose is about ourselves and fulfilling ourselves instead of fulfilling the ultimate calling of our life and the duty, which is to serve mankind. Right. So when we operate in this, uh, once again, narcissistic, uh, um, perverted purpose mindset of purpose, then we miss out on opportunities in the future. And watch how dangerous this is. If, if a child thinks that his or her purpose is all to feel good and to be happy and to be successful and all that stuff, mm -hmm. then, then when they get older, they try to operate that same way in business. And that's not how this works. Business is all about you fulfilling your purpose in serving a client or a customer. Absolutely. Yo, <laughs> Man, oh my god. I hope y'all are paying attention for <laughs> real, yo, because this dude is literally dropping gym after gym. Man, you but can start your that. own jeweler think after about without that. these gyms, <laughs> man. But think about that, like that's if I don't understand the concept of purpose and the value of me giving as a giver, right as a receiver, if I don't understand that concept, then how will I ever be able to identify obstacles and opportunities and problems? in my respective field and then present solutions because I'll only be thinking about my fulfillment and my identity. Therefore, I'll create a product that nobody needs. Because right. it only meets my needs. <laughs> Absolutely. And then and then that, that goes right back to the problem versus the solution. Are you got which one are you doing first? Do you have the problem or do you have the solution? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And so now when people say to me now, like I'm in my purpose, I'm living in my purpose, I'm literally thinking about all of the people that said that to me. And I'm like, yo. You're living in your identity. Yeah. 
and, and, and not only are you living in your identity, you're also creating another narrative, which is an identity crisis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because your identity, but creating an identity yeah, crisis. Yeah, because literally now what you've done is you've created an idol out of yourself. So now your whole world revolves around yourself, and that's why you wonder why you can't keep a, 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 a you know, a. a, a, a Oh my gosh! Look, I've been married so long. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> a boyfriend, wife, girlfriend, significant, uh, other. significant other. Why right. you can't keep a significant other? Why you can't get a good job? Why you can't create a new business? Why you can't create? You're because you're your operating. Your operating you, you, you're not operating your purpose. Drop the mic. This man is in his bag. Yo. Oh my goodness! This is prime time in my bag material right here, yo. This man, that is, yo, that's that's genius, man. That that's genius, man. I'm t I can sit here and talk to you all day. Uh, I, I want to get to um, so real, real quick. Um, the the you, you said you went to the NFL for a couple of years. Yep. What was that experience like? The NFL did two things for me and two things only. Uh, first, it it fulfilled a nostalgic experience that I had throughout my life growing up in, uh, in the locker room and, and on the field with my mm -hmm. dad and, and his teammates. It allowed me to be there's a there's a mo uh, a show on Disney called The Jersey. We used to watch it when we was younger. Mm -hmm. And whenever they, there's this old jersey in this attic or something, whenever they put it on, they became the play. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like <laughs> that was my story. Like, man, I like in a dream, in like some sort of like alternate universe, like like it's all one day. I wake up, I'm, in the, I'm at the Super Bowl with my dad, and we're like, oh my gosh, we made it. And then, you know how movies are, it's like, yeah. next scene, I'm with the Panthers, and I'm talking to Steve Smith. Who played against my dad? You know, like, right. and so, so that's the way I like to see it in my head. But, yeah. but like, it fulfilled that nostalgia, and it was, uh, it was an honor to do it and to be a part of it and to have so much fun. So that's the first thing. The second thing, I was always chasing after whatever. I was always leveraging, right? Mm -hmm. And in business, you're always leveraging, right? Yeah. So I, if I get one client, I'm leveraging that client to the next opportunity to say, hey, I'm working with such and such, and then they say, oh man, you're working with them. Let me get you. So for me, it was, okay, like I, I chose to go to the Dallas Cowboys. That was a conscious business decision because I know that that's America's team, regardless of that I live in Redskin country or Washington football team country. The reality is that's, that team is very, very popular. Right. I knew being a Dallas Cowboy would create some controversy with the Redskins and that's my dad and all that stuff. <laughs> I also knew that as a Cowboy, you get access to different things. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a Cowboy so that for the rest of my life, even though I only played there for a short time, for the rest of my life, people would say, "Oh yeah, he's a former Dallas Cowboy." You you don't even you didn't even care about what I had to say. Now you're like former Excuse Dallas me? Cowboy. That was a business decision. So I was leveraging. The second reason was leveraging this the NFL for whatever I wanted to do yeah, next. Yeah, absolutely. And Resources, you know relationships, whatever. That's exactly what I think I did with the insurance business. When I first got in there, they asked me, what do you want to do this for? I said, I'm doing this because I want to open up three facilities in the DMV, one in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, uh, working with uh, working with uh, at-risk at youth, underprivileged kids, stuff like that. And when I got into it and I was making the money that I was making, I found, I was like, yo, hold on. I'm finding myself selling myself to the highest bidder. I, I completely lost all intention of opening those. I yeah. was like, yo. A thousand dollars a day feels real good. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, this money feels real good, and I went in trips. I went in all expenses paid trips to Jamaica and the Bahamas yeah. from my company, yeah. and I got a plus one for free too. Hey, man, come on, let's go take this trip. So, yeah, and then I really, I said, you know what? And uh, I, I was listening to Eric Thomas, and he said sometimes you got to pass up on good to get to great. Mm -hmm. And so I, I passed up on that opportunity, and um, I said, you know what? Let me go back to school and let me do this. So that's amazing, man. That, that was really, really, really smart, um, smart business decisions on your move, man. I want to move into this last topic because I, I think it's important to talk uh, to talk about this, uh, about relationships, about marriage, and about family, and and then as well as kind of how those things intertwine with business, and how do you you know kind of stay on track like how are you making sure well let me put it this way i read td jake's book over there called instinct and okay. he talked about being a juggler mm -hmm. he said what does a juggler do a juggler throws up multiple things in the air never letting one thing hit the ground but sometimes he throws other things up in the air longer uh up in the air higher than some other things and so he touches them quite frequently mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. so you have to be a good juggler in what you do you yeah. have to be a dad you have to be a son you have to be a husband um, you have to be a business owner. You have to be a coach. You have to be all of the things that all of the hats that you wear in yeah. your entrepreneurial, your professional world. Yeah. Um, 
how how do you find time to balance those things? Uh, and you said you've been married for ten years, right? Ten years. And on on your Instagram, I saw something that said, "Find someone that helps you be, yeah, or that pushes you to be." Talk to us about that. Yeah, I think it's very important uh, before getting married to get past all of the infatuation and all that stuff to really um, be real with another person. Um, I have seven C's that I always uh, coach guys up and, and girls up um, before marrying or before you know connecting with another person. And so I think I can remember them off the cuff. Um, so the first one is conviction. Like our beliefs, our values, spiritual, like all those things. We gotta, we gotta have that set because if we don't, then we're never gonna fully agree. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, so conviction is very important. The next one is character. If your character doesn't align with my character, it doesn't mean you're bad or I'm bad or I'm good or you're good. Like it just means that we probably aren't gonna work well together. How can two walk together except they agree? Like I have to be able to walk with you and to be proud and confident uh, about the way that you move and shake. Um, the third thing is cash. Like, how do you handle money? Mm -hmm. Do you love money? Um, and, and it's okay if I love money too. All right. But if, if, if you're trying to live a humble life and below your means, and I don't, we're gonna have some serious clash. Yeah. You know. Um, so, and I, and I put cash up there because cash is one of the main main uh, reasons why people get divorced. You know what I mean? Well, so, we'll talk so to you about that after this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we got conviction. Uh, we got character. We got cash. Um, we've got uh, chemistry is the last one. So don't even don't even think about chemistry. People start with chemistry, and that's the problem. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, your your um, your community. Mm -hmm. I, it, it was a better C though, because it was basically friends. Um, and let's just call it community. community. Community sounds good though. It sounds good, right? Yeah. So how do you operate with your friends when I'm not there? You know, and, and then are your how how do your friends are your friends in alignment with whatever the values are that we said that we believe in as far as mm -hmm. conviction and character? And if they don't align, don't just tell me I had girls that I dated. Don't just tell me oh they just that's my crazy friend, like oh that that's just my other group. No, you're a part of that group, so that's you too. <laughs> like don't everybody always just say oh I got that one friend, yeah, oh, I got yeah. that, that that one group. And, but I'm I'm different. Like no, that's that's your group, and mm -hmm. there's a reason why you like that group. Yeah, that's there's the, a reason why. Yeah, that's it's, why it's in you too. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> don't act, don't act, try, try to act like that ratchetivity. Right, thing. right, right, right. <laughs> um, very important. Um, now calling. So if I'm called to be an entrepreneur, are you ready for this? Because mm -hmm. we're talking about eighty to hundred hour work weeks. We're not we're not doing forty hour work weeks like your friends that, that get to clock out. Right, uh, clock out. So are you willing to walk into that? Or um, I'm called to travel and to go across the nation, you know, um, or, or outside the nation. Are you willing to hold down the house while I'm gone? Or are you willing to be jumping on these jets and flying everywhere, you know? Um, or, or man, you know, your significant other might be saying, hey, I'm called to be a school teacher. Are you willing to, like, honor her and encourage her as she's doing, you know, all of the studying and preparing and the and the grading papers and that like are you willing to to cook while she does that so right. calling is a very very important one to see so where are we at now we've got we've got conviction character calling community community um cleanliness <laughs> so let's like, talk about it look <laughs> look you do not it there's some folks that live way different than they look mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like their house is way different than they present themselves outside. And so are you willing to uh, like deal with someone who might not be a neat freak? Like, mm -hmm. And people like, oh man, how'd that C make the, make the list? That's not important. Man, the biggest fights in my life have been about hygiene and cleanliness and, and fixing, the, <laughs> fixing the house up. Like uh, uh, what? So, so no. like let's address those right. things. And then finally chemistry. Um, I think if we're at seven now. Yeah, that was seven. Um, you, you missed cash in that one. Cash, so okay. Chemistry. So, so then at chemistry, like, how do you want to be loved? But we're not even talking about that until we handle these other until things. Until we handle them other But things. we want to start with, do you love me? How do you want to love me? So then we get into the love thing. and we then start We start talking about love languages. Exactly. And all love language. I, man, I'm not even speaking that love language until I figure out how you handle money. Your community, your convictions, your calling, your cat, like like all that stuff is important. So 
I, I operate like that. So long way around the front door <laughs> to say like family is critical on the front end. Like, right. What are you building? A lot of people want to get in a relationship. Getting in to me is like walking in the door. I don't want to walk in the door of a relationship. I want to build a house. Mm. Building is way different than just the luxury of just opening turnkey. Right. Like, I don't want to be another turnkey. I want to be in something I built from the ground up. Yo, that's amazing. Man, jeez. I mean, <laughs> what, what else do you, do you have any more questions at all? Are there any more questions? Could there be any more questions for which this is, Which is funny. I kind of only answered the, a portion of the question. Like, that's the foundation. So from that foundation, I find my balance because I have someone who I agree with in those seven areas. Right. So I won't compromise those seven C's. Yeah. So now that we've walked into matrimony, we have a we have a solid foundation to stand on. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we operate according to what we already set in place. Absolutely. Not playing a game with no playbook. You know, yeah. not, not playing a game without knowing the rules. So now from there, she helps me, I help her. She honors me, I honor her. She serves me, I serve her. And then sometimes I won't be there for the family. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I'm grinding. I was in New York yesterday. Like yeah. sometimes I'm not with the kids. So uh, and, and sometimes that's what entail what 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 my job and my uh, responsibility entails. But are we in agreement? Right with that. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. That's what I told my girlfriend. Now is that like you know you're you're in this life. You know what I mean. All of the stuff that comes with this. You know what I mean. Being uh, so I'm, I'm a host and a poet and stuff like that. So there's not only just the entrepreneurial type, but there then, then there's also the other type because I told her and I showed her, I said, listen, I had a real life stalker. Like she created five Instagram profiles just to talk to like just and was and she saw somebody that I was with one time and and she asked Are you, and I was like, uh, yes, I have a girlfriend because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't I was just like, yeah, I have a girlfriend. And she was like, is it her? I was like, no, it's not. Her. And then she sent that message to her, oh my found gosh. her, sent that message to her. And I'm like, and her profile is private. And so I'm like, yo, it, I'm telling you, it was so bad. And so, like, I, I said to my girlfriend, I said, listen, you're in this life now. You know, is this something that you feel like you can deal with? Is this something? Because at any point on our very first day, I told her, I said, and you probably get this too now, uh, you know. You probably get this too. I said, there's people who come up to me and they're like, yo, backpack Jeff. And I'm like, I have no idea who that was. Yeah. And literally on our first date, the dude walked up to me. He's like, hey, backpack Jeff. I was like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? You know, to, had a conversation. And I thought I knew who he was. I threw some hints out there, but he didn't take them. So there was no way he was that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was just like, yeah, all right, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, when pandemic is over, you know, we'll start back up open mics and stuff. For sure. And then when he walked away, I said, I had no idea who that guy was. Yeah. Just because I meet so many people, it's hard to remember everybody's name unless yeah. I do like word association. Unless we talk on a frequent basis, I'm probably going to forget your name and, you know, charge it to my head, not my heart. You know what I mean? But saying? her being able to navigate that, I think, is important. And, yeah. I, I, you know, I I needed a non-entrepreneurial wife. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just what Same. I needed. You know, so she she doesn't care about any of the like riffraff and the um all the lights and stuff which right. is great um she would like to just be at the house um and and there's no knock on being at the house because being at the house is great yeah um and taking care of the kids but that's that's what i needed you know i don't project on anybody but that was important for me mm-hmm. um so so I, I think relationships um are very <coughs> they're very important uh when it comes to building the entrepreneurial life because you got to have something to come back to you gotta have something that's empowering you, you know, moving forward. Yeah. And, and I couldn't do what I what I do today if I didn't have her supporting me uh, right. at home. Super important, man. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, man, this um, wow, th- this this has been a phenomenal episode, man. This, I, I, <laughs> thank you for coming and, no and and spreading and sharing so much wisdom, man. Um, this is this is going to be one of those episodes. I was I was sitting here thinking, and I'm like. I can't wait to go back and actually listen to this episode because mm-hmm. when I'm sitting here, you know, and I'm doing this, I'm always thinking about the next question and moving course, the conversation ahead. And so I love going back and listening to these, listening to it. And yo, know, I'm super excited to go back and listen to this man and really learn from you and connect with you more, you know, on on, on what it is that you're doing, man, and support you more. You for know sure, what I'm saying? For sure. and what you're doing. Um, tell tell people how. Lastly, tell people how they can get uh, get in contact with you. Um, Because some people are going to just only be on the audio, but then also tell people how they can join this group me community that you have, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, Three three things. One is Engage three sixty five is my business. So if you're a business, if you're a business owner and you want to um, find ways to get consulting 
um, or, or if you're trying to build a staff, mostly working with teams, um, you can go to engage365.us. If you um, follow, you can also do the personal thing, follow me on Instagram, all the social media, Jerry Green Speaks, um, and, and that. Um, I would also say, you know, what I'm building right now, I'm writing a book called B, um, and, and the book is about, obviously, discovering your identity and being, being able to is, uh, embrace who you are, love who you are, serve and operate in your purpose. So everything that we talked about. Right. Now, in the midst of that, I'm doing a number of different groups and different communities that are helping me create the content, but they're also serving its purpose uh, before the book is even out by, by blessing other people. So mm -hmm. right now we're doing a 75 day challenge um, and we're, we're basically, it's a group me, um, you can DM me on, on Instagram about it, but basically it's about um, really everything we talked about today, like having your, da your daily routine set, your morning, um, having goals, tasks, you know, staying hydrated, staying, staying mentally right. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, and then I have a few other group me's, um, that are that group me's and, um, community. I have a, I have a texting, uh, you can text me, um, but all that you can DM me and get all that information. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, really what I'm doing is building a culture, creating and establishing a culture mm -hmm. of people who will no longer operate according to their ability, but they're according, uh, but rather according to their identity. And so if you can walk in your spirit, your soul, and your body, um, walk in the fullness of that, then your ability will be off the charts. Yeah, I love it, man. Hey, listen, guys, um, if you guys uh, have, haven't have already, um, make sure uh, that you know you go go and support this brother. He just gave you everything uh, that you can support him on. Um, you guys know that you can go to backpackjuff.com and grab all of your uh, grab all of your merch, grab your wind journals, grab your uh, t-shirts, grab your hoodies. Um, I only have a couple of hoodies left, about uh, 10 hoodies left, and I got them back for you all because you all were requesting them. Um, so uh, I appreciate all of you guys' supports, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this has been another episode of In My Bag with Backpack Jeff. Until next time. Thank you.